fix it, actually. Let's see if that works. Okay. Welcome to Brainwaves, continuing medical audio cation for the neurologist and the trainee. I'm Jim Siegler. Today we've got something quite interesting, an original poem by Dr. Lauren McCullum, one of the resident physicians at the Hospital of the University of Pennsylvania. Take a listen. Apoptosis, from the Greek, apo, away, tosis, falling. Falling away as a dry leaf drifts, soundless to the ground, is, for unavailing cells, a death both gentle and self-contained. This I learn in hospital words as we round and round. Some do not so quietly go. Take the lake, pupil black and underground that churns its disastrous geology in the devastated brain, falling away as a dry leaf drifts, soundless to the ground, would have been a welcome fate. Instead, the neighbor cells are drowned, much as the sickest are encircled by faces, waterlogged and pained. This I learn in hospital wards as we round and round. A patient founders, a new one burgeons. I only noticed once I'm gowned in bedside, checking vitals, making note of drips and drains. Falling away as a dry leaf drifts, soundless to the ground, is how we speak of dying as we throw the word nature around, as if death is dry like bones and we by our white coats ordained. This I learn in hospital wards as we round and round. No. Death will be a flash flood until the last human is found. She'll involute for all of us, her final thought in the parched terrain, falling away as a dry leaf drifts, soundless to the ground. This I learn in hospital wards as we round and round. Hello, and welcome to Brainwaves. I'm Laura Mainardi. I'm joined by my co-resident and friend, Lauren McCollum. Hello. How are you, Lauren? I'm good. How are you? Good. Thank you for reading that wonderful poem. I was hoping we could chat a little bit about it. Of course. When did you write this poem? Well, I wrote the poem um, during my fourth year of medical school when I was already planning to apply in neurology, and I was in the neurology ICU. What inspired you about the NeuroIC to write this poem? I wrote the poem because it was the first time that I was really exposed in a large way to large numbers of patients and families in extremely tragic situations. And I was struck by how differently the doctors and nurses in the ICU handled the tragic situations compared to the, the families of the patients, uh, most of whom themselves were comatose. So I wrote the poem basically to help myself make sense of this disconnection between the different ways that all the different individuals in the neuro ICU approached the subject of death and dying. And at that time, such a young time in your career, did you feel like you connected more with the patients and families as opposed to now that you're a resident? Actually, yes. I felt that my reaction to death and dying was more similar to the family members than to the teams that I was working with, um, which is not to say anything negative about the teams that I was working with. These were wonderful doctors who uh, remain my colleagues. But I guess the difference is, is that once people are in medicine for a long period of time, death, dying, tragic situations becomes part of their daily routine at their job and they have to find ways to be emotionally resilient and kind of compartmentalize their emotional reactions to these situations and also even to find humor and lightness in their work and to enjoy their time with their colleagues at work even as they have to deal with all of these tragic situations. It's just not tenable to be extremely sad and and full of grief all day long as a physician in a neuro ICU. Did you find that writing was a way to cope with these emotions? 
Yes, I, I did find that. I felt that writing this poem really helped me identify and sort through those emotions because I knew that I didn't think that the doctors that were kind of being so dry and, and contained in these situations were uncaring. But it, this poem helped me understand how they were able to do their jobs as they did and manage their emotions. So it's interesting that you mention dry. Um, I noticed there's a lot of imagery in the poem, a lot of contrast between wet and dry, and I was hoping you could uh, talk about that. Uh, right. So the contrast between wet images and dry images is how I sort of made sense of the differences in the way that the families of uh, the patients and the doctors of the patients went about their day in the narrow ICU. Um, so the reason I initially went for images containing wetness was because I was in particular thinking about patients that had brain hemorrhages and this sort of image of the underground lake or a lake in a cave, which is what I think of when I think of blood in the brain. Similarly, uh, patients, families uh, that are standing around these uh, patients who have brain hemorrhages are often crying whereas the doctors themselves usually do not cry, and if anything, they can use very dry clinical terms to describe what is going on and can even have an almost dry sense of humor, which is not to say that they're laughing at patients or their families, but just that they have to find lightness as they can. And so I really use those contrasts between things wet and things dry to carry the poem. I think it was a way to make the message be more effective, just like the form of the poem. So apoptosis was written in villanelle form. Can you explain that to our listeners, what that is? Of course. Villanelle is a form poem. It's a 19-line form that uses repeated lines. Uh, The first stanza has three uh, lines, and the, the first line of that stanza and the third line of that stanza are uh, repeated at certain intervals throughout the poem, and then there's also a rhyme scheme that's based on those same lines. The most famous villanelle uh, that many listeners may be familiar with is Do Not Go Gentle Into That Good Night by Dylan Thomas. The reason I chose this poem is you can almost think of it as a round, and it certainly seems to go around um, as as you hear it out loud. So just the idea of making rounds in the hospital was one of the reasons that I chose this form. And then also uh, the neuro ICU uh, that I was rotating in was physically round. You could just, you know, start at one patient room and work your way around during rounds and end up right where you started. I also used uh, the concept of cells, which are sometimes round, as well as other uh, round or circular objects in the poem. I think I also liked the idea of, I guess, of the circle of life and even futility, the way that we talk about going round in circles and not getting anywhere. So it really was a form that that seemed appropriate for the subject matter. Well, beautiful thoughts about a beautiful poem with Lauren McCollum. Thank you so much, Lauren. Thank you. Thanks for listening to Brainwaves today. If you like what you just heard, you can find more related material on Twitter at Brainwaves Audio or contact us at bweditorialboard at gmail.com. Be sure to check out our iTunes archive for older episodes. This episode was produced by Jim Siegler. Join us next time for another edition of Brainwaves.